Chapter 15 is about mapping, and that's a method for applying a pattern or an image onto the surface of a material. And we can map various channels, for example, the diffuse color to produce an image on a surface. We can map the bump channel to produce roughness. That's what we'll do in this particular movie. And to create roughness on this sofa leather material, a good way to achieve that would be to use a procedural map. In 3D graphics, there are two types of maps, procedural and file maps. And a file map is an image. And a procedural map is some kind of pattern generation algorithm that exists inside the 3D program. So we'll start with the procedural maps and see how they work. Let's open up the material editor. I can click on the M key on my keyboard, open up that slate material editor. Let's bring in that leather material that we created earlier. That's gonna be found in scene materials. I'll drag that over into the view and instance it so we can edit it directly. Double click on the sample swatch there, make it larger. And then we can double click on the name and that'll load it into the parameters here. I just wanna show you all the maps you have available. They're listed here. They're also listed in the parameters here. And you can do things like change the amount of the bump or the amount of displacement or whatever. If we wanted to create a map directly here in this parameters panel, we could just by clicking on these buttons that are labeled none. I'm gonna to choose to create the map in the material map browser over here. The reason I wanna do that is just to illustrate that the maps you have available are going to be dependent upon which renderer you've chosen. If I go over to the render setup dialog here and switch the renderer over to scan line, now we have a bunch of choices here that we didn't have a moment ago. We've got cellular and dent and marble and so on. Those are not currently supported by ART. When I go back to the render setup dialog, switch it back to ART, we don't see cellular or marble or any of those. All right, so what we see is what we get here. If we want to apply a bump map in ART, these are the choices we have. I'm going to use the noise map I'll drag it over into the view and let's double click on that noise image there on that sample in order to see it a little bit larger and connect it to the bump channel. Click and hold, drag over to bump map and release. And that connection's been made and now you can see we've got kind of a bumpy deviated surface here. A bump map is a lighting effect. It doesn't actually change the shape of the model, but it achieves a lighting effect that makes it look rougher. Now we can play around with the noise parameters to get the type of bump effect that we want. If we apply this now or render it, it's not really gonna look that great. Let's see what happens. We do a test render. We've got a bump effect, but it's so large that we can barely even see it. There are some parts of the model that look kind of depressed inward or a little bit darker, and that's the noise effect. I'll go back over here and reduce the size of the noise double click on that, and in the noise parameters, I can bring that down to a value of, let's say, one instead of 25. And now we see a much smaller bump effect there. We can do another test render, see what that gives us. Now we've got a size of one, and it's looking almost kind of like water there. Of course, ignore the graininess, that's a factor of the draft quality for the art or ART renderer. Maybe we can increase that a little bit, bring that up to medium quality. The size of the noise is still too large. I'll bring that down. I'll go back into the material editor and set that noise down. Now we probably wanna see the look of the noise here at a scale that's going to be useful to us. In other words, if I bring this size down to the size I really want, which is 0 0.1, now I don't see a pattern here because it's so small in this little swatch. We need to change the size of the sample object or the size of textures within a swatch. To do that, we actually can't do it from within the Slate Material Editor. There's not an ability to change that option within these menus. We have to switch over to Compact Material Editor, go into its options here, change the render sample size. I'll bring that down to one inch and then click okay. 
go back to the Slate Material Editor, and we actually don't see it update here. We have to just refresh it by changing the size here. All right, so with a value of 0.1, now we're seeing what we need to see, which is the one inch square of material here. Just imagine that that's a one inch square and that's the size of the bump within that. All right, cool. Now, we also wanna play around with some of these other parameters for this procedural map or texture. We can make it a fractal map and that's gonna give us more detail. We don't really need that much detail. We can set the number of levels or iterations to that fractal to two. And now we've got the right amount of detail. And we can play around with the contrast and that's done by adjusting this high and low spinner. If I click on high and drag downward, what I'm saying is I want to basically clip off everything that's above a certain brightness value. I'll set that high amount to a value of 0.6, and then the low we can bring up, and we're basically clipping off anything that is below a certain brightness value. I'll set that low amount to 0.4. And that's a pretty good bump map here for the leather effect that I'm trying to achieve. And I don't need to reassign the material, it's already assigned, and I can go ahead and do another test render. Cool, so now we've got some highlights here that are basically coming from the material, but we've also got the sort of spread of shininess, and that's kind of sort of a diffuse effect that's actually coming from the bump map. So that's basically how you work with procedural maps. There are several of them available to you. And once again, depending upon which renderer you choose, you'll have different options for procedural maps. Some of those procedural maps are actually 2D, like the checker map. Others are 3D. And you'll know if you look in the map parameters. Let's go back to our material editor for a moment. I've got it minimized. And if we look up here, this is a 3D map, and I can tell that because the coordinates here say object X, Y, Z. If we had a 2D map, let's bring one in here like this checker, drag that over and double click on it. Over here, we see a completely different interface, and we don't have object X, Y, Z as an option. We have planar from object X, Y, Z. This is a 3D map. It's actually a pattern that penetrates space in three dimensions. This is a 2D map that's a flat image that's stretched over a surface. And to do that, it needs to have something called UV coordinates. And we'll look at that in a later movie. Basically what you need to know is for these 3D maps, you don't need to apply any kind of UV coordinates. It just happens magically based upon the shape of the object. But for a 2D map, such as this checker, you do need to have UV information, which is the coordinate information of how you want the 2D map to be stretched across the surface. All right, that's how you use 3D procedural maps, in this case, to apply a bump effect.